Hello and welcome to the workshop. Today we're going to be building the Jerome and Guitars Easy Build All Wood Appalachian Mountain Dulcimer Kit. Now the Appalachian Mountain Dulcimer played a very important part in early American folk music. The, the kit's easy to build and they're just a lot of fun to play. So let's get started. Now your kit's going to contain a fretted, pre-fretted dulcimer neck that is uh, either cherry, oak, or walnut a laser cut plywood body, a small parts bag, a guide manual on how to build the kit, and a set of dulcimer strings. In your small parts bag you'll find four tuners with eight small tuner mounting screws, two wooden dowels, two screws and washers for mounting the body to the neck, three small brass tail screws for holding the strings in place, a bridge, four rubber feet, and a pick for playing your new dulcimer. So the first thing I like to do when building a kit is to assemble the body. So in your set of body parts, you'll find a top, two ends, two sides, and a bottom. So I usually start with the bottom, we'll put the bottom down, We'll take one of the sides and attach it here. Now, even though it's not absolutely necessary, we recommend using a small bit of glue uh, to hold these together. It will make your kit last a lot longer, stay more secure, um, and flex less. So I usually put a little bit of glue right on the, uh, the tabs. This is wood glue. This will be plenty along with the friction feet to hold this in place. Uh, I'll attach the first side. Press it in place. There we go, and you can hear the friction fit. Okay, and then next we'll do one end. Obviously, if you don't have a silicone brush for your glue, you can just squeeze it out of the bottle. Elmer's wood glue, or Elmer's white glue, your regular craft glue, works just fine for this. It will hold them together. We've built plenty of them like that. Uh, obviously, if you have wood group glue, this will uh, this will do a great job, so that's what I tend to like. All right, then finally, when we've got our two ends and our one side on, we'll put the last side. Again, let me throw some small amount of glue over here to make this thing last and then we will have our completed body Now that that's all together, we will set that aside to dry. Now, if you've got some sides that are coming out or you know not as tight as you'd like, you can use rubber bands uh, to kind of hold together. Or you know, if you just want to keep the body on, you can put a little bit of weight on the top of this. But I would set that aside to dry for our, depending on the type of glue you use. You know, so this will only take less than a half hour and it should be good enough. Um, if you want to paint your body. Um, this is a good time to do that before you have the neck attached. So I would recommend, uh, you know, bringing it outside and use spray paint or whatever kind of paint you want to decorate the body. Um, we won't be gluing the top uh, to the neck. That's going to be screwed together, so you're free to paint the entire top. Um, I generally leave the inside uh, natural. However, if you'd like, you can paint it black. You can paint it a color. You can put something decorative inside that you can see through the holes. Or whatnot. So, in any event, now is a good time. Set that aside. Either decorate it or just let the the paint dry. 
or the glue dry, and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now while the body is drying, we can work on the neck. So your pre-fretted dulcimer neck also comes with a nut pre-installed to make uh, stringing this up a lot easier. So all we have to do is install our four tuners and eight screws down here, and then install our three uh, tail pins, which are screws as well, down at the end. And then once that's done, we can get the, the neck installed and added to the uh, top and move on from there. So, starting with our tuners. Inside the small parts bag, again, you will find your four tuners. There are two left-hand tuners and two right-hand tuners. So we can separate these up. There are pre-drilled pilot holes that you can align your tuners up with. Also find our, um, our eight tuner screws right here. So what you want to do is you want to have the top of the tuner facing up. Okay? And you want the, the tuner uh, post to go through the post from one side to the other and then the, the uh, actual tuner itself will be on the tail side of the brass gear right here. So we'll find the other one that matches up. We'll get these two seated and then we'll screw these in. This is using a number one Phillips head, number one Phillips screwdriver and these very small, small screws. Um, you might want to use a eyeglass or any screwdriver, watch maker screwdriver if you have one. Those tend to work pretty well. I have these number one Phillips screwdrivers in the shop that I use for small screws like this. So they're already, the pilot holes are drilled all the way to the depth of the screw, so it shouldn't be that difficult to get these in once you get them placed in the holes. Okay, now we'll add in the three tail pins that are used to hold our um, strings to the bottom of the dulcimer. So these are small number two brass screws, and again, we'll use our number one Phillips head screwdriver. Now, these are threaded part of the way down, and they are um, no, no threads for the, the top half. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna screw these in until all the threads are buried in the wood, exposing none of the, the thread. And that will make sure we have a nice smooth surface for the um, strings, string loop. 
whole thing is just And I like to get them all kind of level with each other as well, just to make it look nice. There we go. So now it's time to attach our dulcimer neck to the top of the body. So we'll take our neck and flip that over and you'll see, you should see four holes now in the bottom. Two large dowel holes and two smaller screw holes. So the dowel holes, get our dowels. There's no need to use glue here. They just press in. These are essentially for aligning our neck to the, the body. So now we'll take our top. I usually like to look at it if I painted it. Obviously, we're gonna want to have the painted side facing out, right, facing up. Uh, so in this case, I kind of like this side. So we'll use the dowels to align that uh, to the neck, and then we take our screws and washers. Washer on the screw. Screw this in. Now this will require a number two screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver. So we'll grab that. Do a hole top and bottom. Just go like that. Another one. Finish that. Up. And there we go, top is attached. So now that our body has dried, it's time to attach the top to the body. So we'll take the body here, and again, while it's not absolutely required that you glue it, uh, it is encouraged. So we'll take and place a little bit of glue right on the spots where they meet up. And then we will press fit our top in place. There we go. Slide that in. And we'll let that dry. And once our top is dry, all we need to do is insert the bridge and then put our strings on. Okay, now that the glue has dried on the top, it's time to string up our dulcimer. So you should have a pack of four strings here, two uh, 12 melody strings, a uh, middle string that is a 14, and then a 22 gauge bass string. So we're going to open up this uh, sealed package, pull our strings out. They are color coded uh, from the factory, but you can also see that there are uh, the, the melody strings are in a set of two of the silver. One on at a time, of course. Um, and oh, the first thing we need to do before we uh, attach even the first string is to put our bridge in place. So, what we can do, take the dulcimer, I'm gonna flip it around so that it faces the way I would normally play it. If you look at the, the string spacer, the nut up top, you'll notice that. There are two slots on one side and then a middle slot and then a far end slot. So the double slot, the double course of strings, this is for our melody strings and this should be closest to the player when the tuning pegs are to the player's left. So we're going to take our bridge piece, which is very similar to our nut, and or orient it such that the double strings are also facing me, right? Then we'll take our melody strings starting again with our 
elevated. And we will twist it up a little bit. All right, so we'll take one, take the loop end, I'll hold the bridge in place, and we'll attach the loop end, we'll, we'll string it around, put the loop around the brass tail screw that's closest to that string. Now these are straight, so they're gonna wanna Hold on to it pretty well, loop it, wrap it around the back, right? And hold on to it to keep, hold it taut so that it doesn't come off. And then what I'll do is I'll take that, I'll hold on to this string with my right hand while I take the loose end with my left and place it in the, the hole that's the one closest to the tuning knob and on the tuning peg that is closest to me. And there is a picture in the, the book showing this. So we'll put this through the hole. Pull that through. Now we, we need to leave a little bit of play so that there's a few, a couple lines around. So I leave it semi-loose here. And then all I'll do is just start winding. Okay, and again, we want to have probably a good two two or three winds around there, uh, keeping it close. So I'm keeping the, uh, I'm putting a little bit of pressure, a little, a little bit of tension on it with my right hand while I turn the tuning peg with my left, and that'll help kind of keep it straight. And then I'll guide it into the, uh, the nut slot for that string right here. And same thing, we'll have to watch out, make sure that in the bridge, it's going to the right slot. There we go. And now it's just a matter of winding until the string is fully taut. Now we don't need to tune it up to pitch right now. We'll deal with that later. We just need to make sure that it's, that it's strong enough or secure enough, tight enough that it's going to hold itself in place and it will. And then we'll just cut the excess off right at the, uh, the tuner. So we'll do that for the other three strings. Um, I usually like to our green one is our 22, and that's that's all listed in the right on the string. So I like to go uh, put the first high one in, the first melody string in, and then I'll go back and do the bass string. And this will kind of help keep our our bridge um, centered because the bridge will potentially want to slide one side to the other. So if I do this, I'll have a string on either end that's kind of holding it in place there. Oh, so we'll get that one out all the way down here. And again, we'll give it a little bit of tension like that. Now this one, the, the bass string is gonna go on this tuner. Again, the closest, but on the far side of the back. I'll orient that up. And I like to, again, I use the hole that's closest to the, the side, closest to the tuning mechanism. And then I make sure that the string is wrapping over itself right to, to lock that string in place so that it won't slip as we go after you get done stringing this and after tuning it for the first time you will notice uh, with a new set of strings that the strings will go you know out of tune pretty pretty quickly because they they stretch um you know as they're put on so they need a little bit of time to stretch and acclimate so you know you're gonna have to tune them up multiple times um you know after you first string it up until the, the tuning will stabilize, until the strings have stretched and the tuning will stabilize. Now the middle string, as drawn in the book, goes on the farthest tuner on the opposite side. So basically the, the farthest away from the player. This is the one for the middle string. And again, I'll give it a little bit of, a little bit of play there, just to get a couple good lines, make sure it's taut. second melody string which shares the pin, the tail pin, with the first melody string. They can both go on the same one. Uh, across here and of 
course this one goes in the second slot. And then the second melody string will go in the tuner, uh, the second tuner that's close to the player but towards the head. There we go. Okay, so now that that's strung up, we just need to tune our dulcimer. Now, the, there is no right or wrong way to tune a dulcimer. Um, however, the typical way, at least the way that in the, the book that I use and that I've learned, is D A D, um, where you've got the, the melody strings on D, the middle string on A, and the bass string on D again. Um, so that's how we're going to tune up this one. There, if you don't have, you can use a guitar tuner, or you can use any kind of tuner or piano if you don't have any of those. There are plenty of phone apps for iPhone, Android, whatnot that, that will um, tune your, your dulcimer for you. There's a Fender app, there's a, uh, a Boss app, and probably hundreds more. I've, I've tried many of them. They all work pretty well, uh, especially just for, for something like this. They'll, they should work out just fine because the, the strings are, are tuned in a good key for these things, similar to a guitar. Uh, so let's uh, get that app, get it tuned up, and we can start playing. Ready? 